This is Walking Your Talk, a podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor. Over my career, I've worked with well over 100,000 leaders in every kind of organization. People who are committed to closing the gap between their own values and those of their organization and how they show up every day. I wrote a book called Walking the Talk on how you change corporate culture, but this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks their talk, then this podcast is for you. Be decisive, be simple. Procrastinate, add complexity. It really is that simple. And this week, we're going to explore how decisiveness can add to your ability to walk your talk and create simplicity for you and others around you. Your ability to walk your talk on simplicity is going to be very tied up with your willingness to make decisions. And in this third in the series of episodes that we have related to simplicity, I want to explore decisiveness as a key driver. Last week, we explored perfectionism and how in order to reduce complexity, create more simplicity, you need to learn how to be more willing to accept fit for purpose and not have everything perfect. This week, I want to explore my experience in watching how when individuals and teams are unwilling just to make a decision, it creates incredible waves of complexity throughout the whole organization, which are most obvious, actually, when you hear people talk about meetings. Everybody says, oh, there's too many meetings. I keep having to go to all these meetings. And when you look underneath it, what you're really saying, what everyone is saying is, we're having these meetings, but we don't seem to be getting anywhere in those meetings. What is the purpose of these meetings? And looking again, one of the key purposes of the meeting seems to be to alleviate the reluctance of the meeting leader or sometimes of the whole team to actually make a decision. I think there's a lot of fear around that. I see that there is a reluctance to put my hand up and say, with the incomplete information that I have here, I am making this call. I am making this judgment call, which says that we are going to adopt this proposal. We are going to select this set of consultants. We are going to approve this particular advertisement. We are going to spend money here and not spend money there. And that, of course, is a bit scary because maybe I'll make the wrong judgment call. So by delaying and delaying and delaying my willingness to make that decision, what I will tend to do is I will do one of two or three things. One is I will get more people involved. So I will, you know, in the name of consensus, which is important, but I think is overused, I will bring in more and more people into a meeting to sort of dissolve the individual accountability that relates to my being the one who makes the final decision, who makes that judgment call. And a second thing that will often happen is that I will look for more and more evidence, more and more information. I will ask for more reports, more detail. And of course, the more that I ask for that, the more it generates in the organization. And any leader that I see, you know, they just make, oh, you know, it'd be interesting to find out about this and whether or not this data supports that. Suddenly you've got three weeks of work going on all around you. So while some complexity is generated by process, a lot of complexity is generated simply by this unwillingness to make a decision. So this week, I want to unpack this a little and give you some tips as to how you can become a more decisive person and how you can identify and distinguish between where it really is a life or death decision that absolutely deserves a lot of complexity, a lot of generation of information, a lot of consultation from many people, and where it's just not. And let me start by giving you a very extreme example that I often encourage people I work with in organizations to start with, which is simply to go into a restaurant one day and look at the menu. Glance your eyes down the menu, have a quick squiz at what's on there and go, okay, I'm going to eat this and this and then put it down. And notice how you feel. What's the worst thing that's going to happen on that particular day? Worst thing that's happened is perhaps you'll have a bad meal. Perhaps 
you'll get that wonderful menu envy that we all have when the person opposite us chooses a dish and you go, oh, I wish I'd chosen that one. It looks so much nicer than mine. But that's the end of it. That's the worst thing. So that practice of let me just make a decision, let me just make a judgment call and see where it goes. And out of that, of course, if it's not the right decision, I will learn and do something differently next time. But I think that little story gives us a clue as to the way in which to encourage ourselves to start creating more simplicity in our lives and reducing the complexity we add in other people's lives and the anxiety, because there's a lot of anxiety tied up with holding back from making a decision like that, that avoidance and the way in that avoidance spreads to other people where they can feel that anxiety and they can feel how we are demanding of them a way to give us that relaxation that comes from knowing we've made the right call. But the reality is it is our willingness to make the decisions without complete information that is what we're being paid to do. That's the difference between someone who's good and someone who's less good. A willingness to make a call and live with the consequences and then of course be able to correct very quickly if it's not the right call. So first thing to look at in relation to how we make things simple is what is the worst thing that's going to happen here if we make this decision rather than that one? Is it in fact a below the waterline mistake? Or is it something that could be quickly corrected afterwards? And that in itself starts us down the track of, okay, let's speed this up. So here's the exercise for this week. Take a very good look at the decisions that are on your plate. And ask, if you have a team, ask your team, what are the items where we are probably procrastinating, where we're going round in circle? What are the decisions you would like me or us to make? And then look at what is the worst thing that could happen if we make a decision here and it turns out not to be the right one? Is this really a decision that warrants more consultation, more meetings, more people involved? Or is this now at the point where I am holding back because of my anxiety about making that call and being held to account for the judgment that I made? And when you've looked at that and made the call about which decisions are difficult, pick some smaller ones that you've been procrastinating on. And a little bit like looking down the menu in the restaurant, just call it. Just do it. Notice your anxiety But also notice the way in which complexity is removed from both you and everyone else because you are now on a course of action. And that course of action creates momentum in its own right. It moves everything forward. It allows everybody to focus on then completing and implementing and executing against the decision that you've made. Choose, decide, move forward and complete whatever it is you have on your plate this week. And next week, join me again when we will look at the third of the three major human issues that I have experienced create simplicity and in their absence create complexity. And next week, we will look at piling on the tendency to add and add and add and how being willing to say no and stop things actually creates more simplicity. So please join me then where we will explore further what walking the talk on simplicity really means.